we're going to continue today looking at Luke chapter 22. And in the midst of this meal that Jesus is eating with his disciples, we see there's this bit of an argument that breaks out. It's really almost unfortunate timing if you think about the space that we're in, the last few days, maybe even hours of Jesus's life. And uh, his disciples are arguing about who's going to be the greatest in God's kingdom because they are so not on the same page. They do not understand. Uh, they don't know how to read the room, for one thing. I can't imagine that Jesus was in the mood for this. But this is the space. They're arguing over who's going to be the greatest, who's going to uh, have position and power and authority in, in whatever this new kingdom that Jesus keeps talking about. And Jesus' response to them in verse 25, he says, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, uh, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. So Jesus gives some lessons on leadership here. And he, he really... Uh, sort of compares two styles of leadership. The first he talks about is this sort of what I'm calling authoritative leadership. And he talks about two things that authoritative leaders do, right? He calls them uh, kings in the world, right? These sort of secular uh, type of leadership who are not in God's kingdom. And he says, these kinds of leaders, they do two things. The first thing they do is they wield power over others. They flex their muscles. I'm in charge. I have authority. You have to do what I say because I'm the boss. The second thing is that they they seek recognition. They, they literally call themselves benefactors, meaning when they do something good, when they do actually manage to serve, they want credit. They want recognition. I'm a leader and I've served you and I've cared for you. Now, aren't you lucky to have me, right? He says, this is what it looks like among these kind of leaders who practice a, an authoritative leadership. But Jesus says, not so with you. That's not what leadership looks like in the kingdom. And instead, he paints a picture of servant leadership. Uh, and what he, he defines this, uh, he uses two words, right? He says, if you want to be great, you should be the youngest, meaning uh, in that society, age represented how much control or authority you had. And he said, you should seek to relinquish control. You should be the person with the least amount of sway in the room in terms of how you conduct yourself. And he says, you should seek humility. You should serve everyone else. And in fact, every time he uses that word serve in this um, passage in the Greek, it's the word diakonos, which means uh, uh, diakonon, which is where we get our word deacon, actually. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? And what Jesus is saying is if you are in a position of leadership, any kind of leader, if you're a pastor, an elder, a deacon, a congregational leader, a worship leader, a ministry leader, if you teach a group of five-year-olds and you have people under you, they might be five, that you're pouring into because you're the leader and they're listening to you, your position should be, I'm not here to be in control. I'm not here to demand respect and authority. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to say, what can I do to help you? And I'm not expecting recognition because did you you notice this is not a recipe for greatness did you notice verse 27 look at it again he asks the question who is greater the one who is at the table or the one who's serving and then he gives the answer right he says obviously the one who's at the table that's the person who's greater but I am among you as one who serves. He doesn't say be humble and then one day everyone's going to recognize how great you are he says be humble that's it. Maybe no one will ever recognize. Maybe no one will ever give you your due, as it were. But what it means to be a servant leader is to live in such a way, to live so much like Jesus, that people follow you not because you've demanded it, but because they can't help but choose to do so. Jesus had no position. He had no rank. He had no wealth. Uh, the, the Old Testament tells us that the Messiah would have nothing about him to recommend him to other people, meaning he didn't even look good, according to the Old Testament prophets, right? They spared no detail, right? There was nothing about Jesus that would have given him any right 
to authority, and yet people all the time treated him as someone who had authority. And it's not because he demanded it, it's not because he even necessarily deserved it within the context of the culture. He had it only because of the integrity of who he was in following God and his obedience to God. And people said, clearly, clearly there's something here. But he came as a servant. He came in humility. And it wasn't so that he'd be lifted up great, but only so that God would be made great. So the question I have for you today is how might you serve this week? Or maybe better yet, who is it that God is asking you to serve this week? Not so that anyone will recognize, not so that they'll say thank you, you're the nicest person ever and we're so glad you did that, but simply because we're called to serve, that that's what it looks like to lead.